Hi guys, welcome! In a previous episode of my Preparing for Ninja Class series, we've discussed the overview of Ninja Class and also showed their auxiliary skills. This time, we'll take a closer look at the Ninja's Flowing Blade Auto Attack build for PvE. This is the second episode of the series wherein we'll discuss the stats, skills, runes, equipment, cards, and tips that can help you prepare for a specific Ninja build. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. As discussed in the previous episode, the auto attack of ninjas is very distinct as it is a cycle of four attack types which is called flowing blade. The first two attack types are just slashing animations, with each attack dealing 100% and 150% physical attack damage. Then the third attack type deals three stage damage, giving a total of 300% physical attack damage. And then the fourth and last attack type deals an explosive 600% AoE physical damage. The attack frequency of Flowing Blade is not affected by attack speed. However, Agi will still be important since there's an easier rune that will increase the damage of Flowing Blade for every 10 points of Agi. With this unique auto attack mechanic of the Ninja class, it's essential to complete all the four attack types of Flowing Blade. You need to observe the attack animation closely and wait for the fourth attack type animation before casting other skills. The proper timing of manual skills will ensure an increase in your overall damage output. With that in mind, let's discuss next the recommended stats for this build. Prioritize putting points on strength as it is a stat that directly affects melee physical power. This will be the foundation for beginners to increase damage. However, for veteran players who already have a high attack deposit, Agi will be more beneficial in increasing damage since every 10 Agi increases the damage of Flowing Blade by 2%. Just make sure that when allocating base stat points, your total Agi should be divisible by 10 for maximum efficiency. Having high Agi would also boost your flea, which can help improve survivability. Another important stat is Luck, to ensure that majority of your attacks will deal critical damage. Getting at least 100 crit would be enough in PvE. Another advantage of increasing luck is that it will affect the calculation of true damage caused by the Soul Severance 4th Job passive skill. Up next, let's discuss the most important skills for this build. First, for ninja skills, there's actually no skill that is exclusive for increasing the damage of Flowing Blade, so I suggest getting only the following buff and auxiliary skills. First is Four Spirits, which is a buff that summons an elemental aura around you. This will convert the element of your attacks and skills according to your chosen element. It also provides a 20% increase in the corresponding elemental attack. There's an easier rune which grants plus 15 Agi when you carry the Wind Aura, so this will be helpful in increasing Flowing Blade damage. It can also be used defensive as there's another easier rune that grants plus 20% damage reduction to the chosen Aura element. Second is Leave It Behind which is a channeling skill that continuously restores both your HP and SP for 3 seconds. It is a good defensive skill as you'll get up to plus 25% damage reduction while channeling if the Aesir rune is activated. Other auxiliary skills you should get are Ninjutsu Thousand Shadows to summon clones, Shadow Leap for mobility, Misty for defensive hiding, and Shadow Slash for increased casting range while hiding. As for your remaining skill points, there's an option to add points on an Ninjutsu Magic Skill branch to unlock the prerequisites for the third job skill Psychic Spell Ogare. This is a magic skill that summons a Thunder Beast around you for 18 seconds, dealing wind magic damage to one enemy unit every second. However, the overall DPS is only increased by a little since we will not focus on increasing magic attack. Its damage and duration can be further increased by activating these runes. Wow. Next for the Kagoro and Obora third job skills, there are three passive skills that can improve your damage while doing auto attacks. First is Sword Cultivation which grants plus 80 attack, plus 200 auto attack, and plus 10% physical damage increase when wielding a sword type weapon. There's also an easier rune that grants up to plus 6% physical and magic damage reduction when equipped with a sword. Second is Shadow Warrior, which has a 20% chance of summoning a Shadow Warrior when doing auto attacks, causing neutral physical damage to the enemy. Several runes can enhance its effect, which will boost its damage, increase its trigger chance, and give chance to trigger critical hit. 
And third is Ultimate Chop, which has a 35% chance of breaking the target's aura when doing auto attacks, dealing damage after 3 seconds. It also inflicts extra damage when the target is bleeding. Ultimate Chop can be triggered by Shadow Warrior when this Aesir rune is activated. Kagero and Oboro also have a sword exclusive attack skill called Ten Slash, which deals damage to a single target. There's an advanced rune which increases its damage by up to 30% and grants up to 10% chance to stun. However, the damage of 10 slash does not crit, so you will need to build ignore def and skill damage multiplier for it to be more effective, which are not the focus of the auto attack build. So personally, I think it would be more advantageous to allocate points on other auxiliary skills instead of 10 slash. Once you've changed into Yamata and Amaterasu for job, you can prioritize allocating your time quicksand on the following skills. First is Amaterasu Flash, which lets you dash 9 meters forward, inflicting damage and bleed status to all enemies on the path. Its cooldown can be reduced to 4 seconds with this enhancement skill. This would be a very good skill to engage enemies on the backline, especially during GVG. As discussed in a previous episode, Ninjas already have a lot of mobility skills such as Shadow Leap and Ninjutsu Dodge, and the addition of Amaterasu Flash would really make it difficult for enemies to catch ninjas. Next, we have the Flowing Shadow Heart skill, which can only be casted after completing a cycle of Flowing Blade. It channels for 2 seconds wherein all enemies in the front are continuously hit for every 0.2 seconds. Its damage is based on your Flowing Blade's first attack type, and it can critically hit. Enemies at the tail end will receive double damage so it can be used to reach the back lines in GVG. Although it deals massive damage, you cannot move or cast other skills during the 2 second channeling period, so you'll be exposed to counter attacks. Flowing Shadow Heart has two related enhancement skills. The first will reduce the target's movement speed and the second will grant you damage reduction while the skill is channeling. There's also a class as Star Rune, which will make Flowing Shadow Heart significantly deal more damage. You can also enhance your elemental damage by using Universal Nature, since it will create an elemental array under the caster's feet corresponding to the caster's elemental aura. When enemies are inside the elemental array, their corresponding elemental damage reduction, def and M def will be reduced, and they will be inflicted with abnormal status. Another useful Ford job skill is 16 Knights, which removes fixed cast time by 100% and increases M-Pen by 30% for 25 seconds. The passive skill Soul Severance can also deal additional true damage for MVPs that have buffs. Its damage is calculated based on the number of buffs the enemy has and your total luck stat. It also can be enhanced by up to 40% with this enhancement skill. Lastly, you should also get Quick Escape, which is the anti-fatal mechanic of ninjas. The trigger chance is quite low so you can enhance it with this class S star rune. The general skill combo when fighting boss monsters would be to manually buff yourself first with 16 knights to remove the fixed cast time of skills. Then cast Breaking Dawn, which is an AC rune that increases physical penetration by up to 30%. However, bear in mind that you cannot enter hiding status when Breaking Dawn is active. This buff can be removed by casting 16 Knights, that's why you need to cast 16 Knights first before Breaking Dawn if you want to keep both buffs. Next, summon your chosen elemental aura using 4 spirits, and then create an elemental magic array under the boss monster using Universal Nature. Since Universal Nature will consume your aura, you need to cast 4 spirits again to regain your elemental aura. Other optional skills you can use before attacking are Ninjutsu Thousand Shadows so that the shadow clones can tank damage, and Psychic Spell Ogare for a little increase in damage. Afterwards, you can start auto-attacking with Flowing Blade and wait for the fourth attack type before you manually cast Flowing Shadow Heart. It has a cooldown of 5 seconds, so you may cast it every after 2 complete cycles of Flowing Blade. If the target keeps on moving, you can reposition using Amaterasu Flash or your other mobility skills. If your HP or SP falls below 25%, you may cast Leave It Behind for sustain. 
Make sure to observe your clones and buffs carefully and recast them only after the end of the Flowing Blade fort attack. Only Flowing Blades should be in your auto skill slot to ensure efficiency when casting manual skills. When it comes to auto farming, the Flowing Blade build is not really efficient similar to other melee auto attack builds, especially if you're still a beginner. A huge investment in gears and handbook is required if you want to have decent farming income. You'll need to ensure that you can kill monsters with at least the first two attack types of Flowing Blade. Overall, the Flowing Blade build has a high skill ceiling and requires a lot of proper timing and skill cooldown management. Future ninja players who are eager to learn and practice the timing of skill combos would find success in both PvE and PvP. Up next, let's discuss the most important runes to get. For Acer Monument, these are the runes that can help increase your overall damage output. If you have remaining gold medals and contribution, just activate your runes that improve your chosen auxiliary skills. For advanced runes, the essential skill runes are as follows. First is one single thought class S star rune, wherein you need to prioritize a high value for the first line for increasing the damage of flowing shadow heart. Second is true meaning of shadow class S rune, wherein the priority is to activate the third line for the shadow warrior's damage to crit. Third is all direction shadow class S rune, which increases the damage dealt and reduces the damage received by shadow clones. Your clones will be very handy when fighting against boss monsters since they'll get the aggro of the MVP. As for other skill runes, you may opt for those that improve the effects of auxiliary skills such as Cicada Knight Class S Star Rune for higher quick escape trigger probability and Thunder Wolf's Protection Class S Rune with the third line activated for it to hit two more enemies around you. And for the attribute runes, prioritize upgrading the following to increase your damage. Up next, let's dive into the suggested equipment set and cards. In general, we want to prioritize gears and enchantment that boost melee physical damage, physical penetration, auto attack damage, critical damage, and agi. You also need to ensure that you have sufficient amount of the following stats, strength and attack to build the foundation of your damage, luck and crit for your attacks to crit, and movement speed to reach your target faster. Having a well-balanced stat distribution is essential for increasing your overall damage output. For weapon, there's a new sword exclusive for the ninja class called Renowned Blade Muramasa. It increases strength, crit, and attack percentage, as well as the damage of flowing blade by 1% for every refined level plus 1. This can be crafted in Pion and upgraded to tier 8 using the following materials. Its synth version, when refined to plus 15, will grant a total of 12 strength, 20 crit, 10% attack, 10% melee physical damage, and 45% flowing blade damage. For weapon enchantment, aim for a high PDI, crit damage or agi stat, and sharp blade or sharp for fort enchant. For weapon cards, it's cheaper and more efficient to use any of the following race, size, or element damage modifier cards and just switch depending on the monster you're up against. But if you have budget for MVP cards, then it would be better to get any of these. For offhand, you may use the new ninja exclusive offhand arm armor for additional strength and melee physical damage. This can be crafted in Orc Village and upgraded to tier 8 using the following materials. Its synth version will be the best in slot as it gives a ludicrous amount of melee physical damage, especially at plus 15 refinement. Possible alternatives are Vink Magic Bracelet for more pen and attack percent with a high flea build, or Golden Wrist which also grants pen and attack percent. For offhand enchantment, aim for a high PDI or crit damage stat and armor breaking for fort enchant. For offhand cards, it's cheaper and more efficient to use any of the following element damage modifier cards and just switch depending on the monster you're up against. You may also use Meryl Rowland's card against boss monsters or a new star card if you're lazy to switch cards. But if you have budget, then it would be better to inlay an Alistar card. 
For armor, there's nothing exclusive for ninjas so you may just use either the Ninja Clothes Cold Night Song or Tyrannical Armor. The former grants more strength, luck, and melee physical damage, while the latter grants more agi, attack percent, crit rate, and crit damage. For armor enchantment, aim for a high PDI, crit damage, or agi stat, and sharp for a fourth enchant. For armor cards, you can use any of the following cards. For garment, you may use the synth version of the new Ninja exclusive Illusion Garments or Undershirt. Overall, synth Illusion Garments give you the highest auto attack damage, while synth Undershirt gives higher attack, flee, and crit damage. You can check my garment synthesis video to know which crafting materials to prepare for this new feature in RO 2.0. For garment enchantment, aim for a high PDI or crit damage stat. For garment cards, you can use any of the following cards. But for late game, it would be better to use one of the following mini star cards. For footgear, the options are the synth versions of Wolf Grandma slippers for higher melee physical damage, advanced sack teddy shoes for higher crit damage, or rune boots for higher attack percent. You can check my footgear synthesis video to know which crafting materials to prepare for this new feature in RO 2.0. For footgear enchantment, aim for high PDI or crit damage stat. For footgear cards, you can use any of the following cards. But for late game, it would be better to use one of the following MVP star cards. For accessory, there's a new accessory exclusive for a ninja class called Ninja's Beginner Manual, which increases strength and auto attack damage. This can be crafted in Gingerbread City and upgraded to tier 8 using the following materials. It has set effect with famous Blade Muramasa that adds 10 crit and 10% critical damage. Its synth version grants additional 3% basic attack damage at plus 15 refinement. Other options are Hermit's Bundle for extra melee damage and attack percent, or Fading Tear which can significantly increase crit damage for a short period of time. For Accessory Enchantment, aim for high PDI or crit damage stat and Sharp Blade for fourth enchant. For accessory cards, it's cheaper and more efficient to use any of the following element damage modifier cards and just switch depending on the monster you're up against. If you're lazy to switch cards, then you can use any of the following cards. For headgears, there's a lot of options for gacha and non-gacha, so just choose the ones you have that will give the highest auto attack damage, melee physical damage, crit damage, agi, physical penetration, and attack. For headwear enchantment, aim for the following stats in each slot, especially the zeal 4th enchant which increases auto attack damage. For headgear cards, you may use any of the following cards. But for late game, you may use a gem spirit or a humbla card. And for pets, the best pet would be the moon hugging pup from the episode 7.5 main story quest as it grants 20% crit damage for 10 seconds using the moonlight healing skill. Its passive also gives plus 10 crit. Other options for pets are Baphomet Jr., Mistletane, Jiltrish, or Moonlight Flower. You may also use pets that can resurrect such as Ubun and Osiris, or pets that can taunt enemies such as Orc Warrior and Orc Baby. Lastly, here are the other things you need to prepare. First, if you're going to multi-job your main character, then prepare 88 Big Cat Coins as it's unlikely that a job transfer voucher will be given for free. If you just want to experience the class, then you may free up a character slot before the release date. Then create a new character and go through the Curatura Academy program to change into the Ninja Fort job in just 2 days. Second, stock up on your guild contribution and gold medals for the Asia runes as well as dusty and glittering rune stones for advanced runes. Getting decent advanced runes requires some luck so save as many rune stones as you can. Third, make sure that the stats in your guild blessing and guild prayers are aligned with the corresponding build. Prioritize increasing your crit damage, pen, attack, and elemental attack. Fourth, for Oracle Mirror, you may extract the stats of any of the following. A high refined combustible knife for physical penetration, a high refine slash for auto attack damage, or a high refine heartbreaker for crit and critical damage. 
Fifth, aside from getting a high attack deposit in your handbook, you also need to invest in these cards and headgears which provide strength, agi, luck, crit and critical damage unlock and deposit rewards. You can also unlock the following jobs for bonus stats. Now lastly, save as much zenny and materials as you can since some of the gears are not yet available in the current patch. You'll be needing at least plus 10 refinement on these gears which will be quite expensive. Also, stock up on more coins for enchanting the new ninja exclusive gears. Alright, so far we've discussed the stats, skills, runes, equipment, cards, and tips to prepare for the following blade auto attack build of ninjas. Stay tuned for the next episode of my Preparing for Ninja series as we'll focus more on the Huma Shuriken physical damage build. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love for you to consider subscribing by hitting the red subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.